Jeff's Superscript is brought to you by Black Cat Comics and Collectibles. In my opinion, the best comic shop and clubhouse on the internet. Follow them at Black Cat Burbank on Instagram and join their claim sales on Tuesdays for new books and Fridays for back issues. And don't forget to ask about joining their Stray Cats Club for special perks. Hi, I'm Jeff, and welcome to another one of my videos where I take a look at all the new comic books hitting final order cutoff this upcoming weekend, Sunday, April 11th for all DC books, and Monday, April 12th for everything else. Now, these videos I feel might be a little bit too long. I'm trying to compress them as much as possible, so let's go ahead and jump into the content right now. There aren't too many of them, so hopefully it won't take too long. The first book I want to take a look at is a book called The Good Asian uh, from Image Comics. This is a nine-part limited series. The description reads, Following Edison Hark, a haunted, self-loathing Chinese-American detective on the trail of a killer in 1936 Chinatown, The Good Asian is Chinatown Noir starring the first generation of Americans to come of age under an immigration ban, the Chinese as they're besieged by rampant murders, abusive police, and a world that seemingly never changes. There's three quotes here, but I'm gonna read one of them that says, Edison Hark immediately joins the ranks of Philip Marlowe and Sam Spade in a smart classic noir drenched in style and history. That quote is from my guy, James Tynan IV. Well, this sounds like it could be a pretty cool story. There's been a billion noir detective stories, but I do not believe that there has been any that I can think of off the top of my head that feature a, an Asian, specifically a Chinese American main character. And considering the fact that May is Asian Pacific American Heritage Month, and also considering the fact that there's just kind of this trend, unfortunately, of violence toward, toward Asian Americans right now, um, this might be a good thing to pick up, not only as a great read, but also as a, uh, a good thing to do socially as well. So something you might want to consider checking out this upcoming FOC. The next book I want to mention to you is Heroes Reborn. Uh, Reborn. Uh, this is a seven-part limited series. This one is particularly interesting. The description reads, A World Without Avengers. Welcome to a world where Tony Stark never built an Iron Man armor, where Thor is a hard-drinking atheist who despises hammers, where Wakanda is dismissed as a myth, and where Captain America was never found in the ice because there were no Avengers to find him. Instead, this world has always been protected by Earth's mightiest heroes, the Squadron Supreme of America. And now the Squadron faces an attack from some of their fiercest enemies, like Dr. Juggernaut, the Black Skull, the Silver Witch, and Thanos with his Affinin Infinity Rings. But why is the Daywalker Blade the one man alive who seems to remember that the entire world has somehow been reborn? This sounds pretty cool and pretty interesting to me. I am just about 99.9% .9 sure I am going to be adding that book to my polls this upcoming weekend before FOC. The next book I want to mention is something that I don't usually mention, and it is a trade paperback. It is the trade paperback for Spider-Man Life Story by Chip Zdarsky. Um, now, the reason I bring this up is because I've heard nothing but amazing things about this story. It basically takes Spider-Man from his inception in 1962 and moves him through the decades as if he had aged normally through the 70s, the 80s, 90s, and he's a decade older each time. It's a fun and interesting story written by Chip Zdarsky, who I am becoming uh, a bigger and bigger fan of the more and more I read his stuff and the more and more I hear about the things that he does. So this was originally came out in six issues. Now it's uh, this is a trade paperback edition. I wanted to mention it because it sounds like it could be an amazing read. And also, potentially, if you order it pre-FOC from your comic shop, you might be able to get some pretty nice discounts on it. I believe, I don't have it right here, unfortunately. I believe that the cover price on it is $25, but if you were able to get like 20% off of that, that's 20 bucks. That's not so bad for something that might be a really great read to check out. Anyways, let's move forward. The next thing I want to mention to you is Star Wars Bounty Hunters Alpha Director's Cut. That's what it says here. We're going to talk about this a little bit more in just a second, but let me just read this description. It says, this year's blockbuster Star Wars comic event in Director's Cut form. 
Boba Fett will stop at nothing to get the job done. Transporting his latest, greatest bounty, Han Solo, should be an easy payday. But there's just one problem, a big one, and someone is going to pay for it. Experience Charles Soule's epic, space-shattering story in director's cut format, complete with Steve McNiven's mind-blowing black and white art and more incredible bonus features. This sounds like a really cool story. Um, I like the idea of there being conflict as Boba Fett is trying to deliver Han Solo and collect the bounty. Like, what happened between the time when he left with Han Solo in Carbonite and by the time he got to Jabba's palace with Han? This could be an interesting, fun story. In addition, if the director's cut version of it isn't interesting to you, there is apparently like a normal version of it called, and it's this, the actual title is Star Wars War of the Bounty Hunters. Uh, and the, the description for this version of it reads, the Star Wars comic event you've been waiting for. The notorious bounty hunter Boba Fett has finally landed his great prize, Han Solo frozen in carbonite for easy transport. Fett will bring the smuggler to Tatooine to collect the massive bounty placed on Solo's head. But the fearsome crime lord, uh, by the fearsome crime lord, Job the Hutt, sounds easy. What could go wrong? So you have two different ways that you can uh, enjoy this story, either in the normal way or the director's cut way. I don't know which one I would recommend. Like if I was gonna choose one of them, I don't know which one I would choose. I'm always a kind of a more is better kind of guy. So I would probably go with the director's cut. I believe one is $4 and the other one is $6. The director's cut's being the more expensive one. Uh, but if you just think the story sounds cool and you just want the story and you don't want any, any extra bonus, anything to go with it, uh, you can just go ahead and get the normal $4 edition. The next book I want to mention to you is a book called Eve. It's a five-part series from Boom Studios. It says, For fans of Undiscovered Country and Little Bird comes a new adventure series from award-winning author Victor Laval and rising star artist Joe Mi Jong about a dangerous journey across a future dystopian America to save the world. When the ice caps melted, most of humanity was lost to the hidden disease that was released. Now, a mysterious girl named Eve has awoken in secret and must deal with a world that's nothing like the virtual reality she was raised in. In order to save her real father, Eve must embark on a deadly quest across the country. But she has no idea of the threats that await her or the price she will pay to restore life to a dying planet. It could be interesting to me, um, but kind of what something that throws me off is this image of this girl riding uh, uh, on the water using a stop sign as a paddle with this bear that's kind of looking out. I don't know if this is a virtual reality component or if she's making this travel along with a bear. It sounded interesting, but the, the, the image is throwing me off. Uh, I don't know what to think about this, but it is from Boom Studios. I like the stuff that Boom puts out in general, so it might be worth checking out for that reason alone. Speaking of which, I want to mention to you the next book, which is Wind, number six from Boom Studios. Um, this is from my guy, James Tynan IV, and I read Wind one through five, and I liked it. Uh, I, I thought it was really enjoyable. I think a lot of people have slept on Wind. I don't think Wind has gotten the respect it deserves. And now we're getting more issues of Wind, a continuation of the story. And as a fan of James Tynan IV, as a fan of Wind, um, I am absolutely looking forward to issue number six coming out. It's absolutely going to be on my pull. You could probably go back and and maybe find copies of issues one through five out there. I don't think there were a ton printed. Worst case scenario, you could find it in trade. It's collected uh, in issues one, issues one through five are collected in a trade paperback. So you could pick up the story there. It's a nice story about kind of like accepting who you are um, and uh, coming to terms with that. So it could be a, a nice story. It's a great story and it has a great message as well. The next book I want to point out to you is interesting. It's called Extraordinary Number Zero from Titan Comics. It says, brand new series expands deeper into the world of Schwab's critically acclaimed novels, Vicious and Vengeful. 
set in the years between Vicious and Vengeful, Extraordinary, uh, follows a teenage girl named Charlotte Tills, who survives a bus crash and becomes EO, Extraordinary, gaining the ability to see people's depths in reflective surfaces. Uh, Entertainment Weekly's 27 female authors who rule sci-fi and fantasy right now. Now, this sounds interesting enough on its own, based solely on the description. But here's something that makes it especially interesting. They're selling it for $1. So you can get this book, check it out, see if you like it. Uh, there may even be first appearances in here. Uh, this book could potentially be key down the line, and it's only gonna cost you one dollar to check out for me i'm kind of like from personally i'm like i feel like i would be dumb not to spend the dollar maybe you could even get a discount from your comic shop if you order it pre-final order cutoff and maybe spend 80 cents on it or something like that um in order to get it so uh i, I definitely recommend checking this out because the price is so right the next book i want to mention to you is uh Majory Finnegan, Temporal Criminal. This is from uh, AWA Upshot. This is a, an eight-part limited series. The description reads, She's Marjorie Finnegan. She's a temporal criminal. What more do you need to know? All right, then. All Marge wants to do is race up and down the time lanes, stealing every shiny, gleamy, pretty, sparkly she can lay her hands on. But her larcenous trail from the Big Bang to the 95th Reich has drawn the beady eye of the Temporal PD, whose number one deputy marshal is now hard on our heroine's tail and taking things extremely personally. We're still... Marge, Marge's worthless creep of an ex and his even scummier partner have seen an angle of their own in all of this and now intend to use her time tech to change history for their own benefit. Marge's only ally, a guy named Tim, and he's just a head. I mean, come on, what use is just a head? Okay, so this sounds pretty ridiculous, but it could be ridiculous in the fun category, the fun ridiculous kind of thing. If you're looking for something to check out this week that it just seems kind of silly and fun and ridiculous, I think that this could fit the bill for you. Might be worth checking out. The next book I want to mention to you, and it's actually the last book we're going to talk about today, is the only one I want to mention from DC. Remember, DC's final order cutoff date is one day earlier this upcoming Sunday, the 11th. The book I want to mention to you is DC Festival of Heroes, the Asian Superhero Celebration. Uh, here's the description. Grab your favorite boba and pull up a chair to the dim sum table. Uh, this first sentence already seems borderline racist, but I'm going to go with it as meaning to celebrate these things. Um, as we celebrate Asian Heritage Month with all your favorite Asian DC characters, old and new. Join Cassandra Cain, Katana, Green Lantern, Tai Pham, uh, The Atom, uh, Dana Tan, a.k.a. Batman Beyond, Red Arrow, Lady Shiva, Damian Wayne, and the Al Ghul Clan, uh, New Superman, and more as we present new tales of these characters from their thrilling history. Plus, Cheshire Cat's relationship to Cheshire is revealed as Shoes asks Selena Kyle to take her under her wing as Catgirl. And that's just the start. Okay, so as I mentioned with the first book that we talked about today, The Good Asian, May is Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. So DC is appropriately putting out this to shine a brighter light on Asian American characters. In general, as I've mentioned in past months, when other um, publishers and you know DC and others have done this type of thing to celebrate other different types of ethnic groups, uh, for example, um, I say the same thing. It's great. It's wonderful. I'm glad that they're doing this. I'm glad that they're shining a uh, a light on these characters from groups that historically may have been disenfranchised, for lack of a better way to put it. Um, however, 
ultimately, for me, what it all boils down to is, are the characters awesome, and are they well-written, and are the stories great? So I'm hoping that there's going to be some great little stories uh, collected in here. It's from various writers and various artists. It does not list here at all who those writers or artists are. But, you know, if you want to... Um, celebrate uh, Asian Pacific American Heritage Month in your own way, or if you're in, of Asian descent yourself and you want, you know, to a little bit more visibility in your characters, uh, this is a wonderful opportunity to pick up a collection and sample a bunch of different characters that fit the, um, the Asian template, for lack of a better way of expressing it. Okay, that is it. That is all the books I wanted to mention this week that are hitting Final Order Cutoff this upcoming weekend. Once again, April 11th for DC Books and April 12th for uh, everything else. Um, let me know down in the comments if any of these books piqued your interest. If you're like, I, you know, I didn't know about that book, Jeff, but I'm so glad you mentioned it and I'm absolutely interested in checking it out now. Uh, also, as always, if you appreciate this content and me taking the time to point out some of these books to you, likes are a great way to show your appreciation. Thank you if you went ahead and hit that like button. And finally, if you haven't done so already, I invite you to subscribe to my channel by hitting the subscribe guy right here. And make sure you hit the notification bell so you're informed when I post new content. As always, thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you in the next one.